Hey, hi, Peter Watts Retrospect. How you doing today? Today, I want to talk about two brands that were there from the very beginning of what has become perhaps the most popular genre of watches, dive watches. Uh, the two here that you're looking at are a Rolex or Mariner and a uh, Zodiac Seawolf, uh, both of which, along with the Block Pong 50 Fathoms, were produced as early as 1953. Uh, the Block Pong gets credit for being first, but the Seawolf actually was introduced before the Samariner, which was officially revealed at Basel World in 54. Uh, neither of these are the original references as they would be worth a whole lot more. Uh, the Rolex would be worth tens of thousands if it was. Um, let's look at the Samariner first. Um, this one here is a, uh, is a reference uh, 16610. Um, this is what we, is considered the, um, you know, the pre-ceramic the pre one. Um, these have been around, uh, depending what source you listen to, have been around from 87 or 88. Um, and ran all the way up to uh, 2010, uh, easily the longest reference run for the infamous uh, Samariner. Um, again, these are known as the pre-ceramic subs. And then in uh, 2010, they came out with the new, um, the new ceramic, the ceramic versions. Um, this, of course, is the, uh, you know, the old 40 millimeter case. Um, you know, before the introduction of the so-called super cases, you know, with the maxi dials, um, which had the larger indices and the hands, um, and the hands were a lot bigger as well. Um, dimensionally, this one is actually going to be closer to what the original subs were like, with, without a doubt. Um, it's got the nice uh, polished side, but you're going to find this compared to the super case that these, it's just a smaller, they visually are smaller, uh, you know, measure, if you measure them, they are the same, but the, uh, the crown guards are much thicker. And the biggest thing when the very first version of the uh, ceramic sub came out, the, uh, the one, one, six six ten uh is these lugs were much the lugs here were much wider and the, the watch almost looks square if you look at them um, but a lot of people really do prefer these these older ones they just have a certain um again they're just closer to the dna of the original of the original subs and they are just, a, just i find them to be you know a little just very comfortable to fit and the other ones just to come across a lot bigger and a lot blingier. Um, and this one here, you know, of course, like I said, it's got the, the standard size. I don't want to say standard size, but the original size um, indices and the handsets. And again, the, uh, on, the, on the newer uh, maxi dials, there's indices around the indices are just bigger. And even the hands are more, they're, they're fatter, basically. Um, this one here has got kind of the much maligned uh, bracelet. I don't know. I've never had any issue with these bracelets. It's stamped. And, you know, in, I don't know, up to 2010, I don't think people that own Rolexes, including myself, I've had Rolexes since the early 80s, you know, looked at these and thought, oh boy, what a piece of junk these are. I, I never had any issue with them. Granted, the new ones are more substantial, but I don't know. These are really comfortable. A lot of people like these because of the, how comfortable they are. Um, and I kind of like this little, you know, sort of fake... Um, link um engrave on, on on the class kind of blends it in really nice but uh really really comfortable really comfortable watch they are um like i said you know been around for nearly 23 years so this is one that a lot of people think of when they think of a rolex or mariner and um just just a you know just an iconic watch it's been uh probably one of the most recognizable watches that you'll you know that that's out there really most people see this and they kind of you know, especially along if you have a date one with the, uh, the Cyclops, they're just, just very recognizable. Most people that aren't even into watches would kind of reckon, you know, kind of notice it and think, oh, that must be a Rolex. But um, the other one here is the Zodiac. Now, the Zodiac Seawolf actually came out before the Submariner. It actually was released, um, you know, after the Block Pump, but a little bit uh, before the Submariner. Obviously, it never hit the same... Uh, same level that the Samariner has. And, uh, you know, Zodiac kind of went through phases with the quartz crisis and kind of, I don't think they went completely out of business, but kind of not until they were uh, uh, purchased by a Fossil Group in the early 2000s, they kind of reemerged and, and, and reintroduced a lot of their watches. This is a Super Seawolf Pro Diver 300. It's a, uh, it is an ISO uh, certified um, it is a, it is actually a certified chronometer as well. It's got a Salita uh, SW200 in it. It's got a ceramic bezel. Uh, you got a nice um, screw down steel case, nice heavy case uh, uh, back 
with the Zodiac emblem in Boston there. This particular one I have on the Zodiac accordion strap, which I really like. Um, this came on a, a seven link bracelet. You know, when you buy these, it's sort of like a seven link, you know, almost like a Jubilee style bracelet that I don't know, just never made sense for this watch. It has a butterfly clasp and I just never could get off, off on it. So I, um, I, I just put it on the Zodiac strap and I like it a whole, a whole lot better. Uh, but to me, the, the the real strong point of this watch is the uh, dial. I really love the handset, and I really love the um, kind of the seafoam indices. I love orange minute hands on divers. Uh, this one here, hard to see in this light, but you kind of see the sunburst will go kind of like a charcoal charcoal on it. Um, but a really nice watch. It's it's a bigger fitting watch. It's a forty two millimeter, and it is it, it is a thicker watch. Um, and although this is a lot different than the original Seawolf. It definitely has sort of um, styling cues from the original where it's got kind of this circular case with the turned down lugs and um, really neat handset. Again, that's really my, to me, the part I really love about this watch. You got the little Zodiac, um, this thing's not running, so it's not moving, but you got the Zodiac counterweight on it. And, uh, you know, that Zodiac emblem, of course, is kind of famous for the Zodiac killer. If you don't know much about that, not a thing to be famous for, but yes, it is. Um, but this here, you got to just really give kudos to these two watches. Um, again, Zodiac came out in, you know, before the Submariner. Submariner, I guess, was being produced in 53, but the, um, you know, wasn't really introduced until uh, 54. So actually the Zodiac gets credit for being, um, you know, introduced prior to, to the Submariner. Block Pond 50 Fathoms, again, gets credit for being the first one, but, these two watches were there from the beginning and you just got to really give credit due where your credit is due. And, and uh, you know, this watch, you know, dive watch genre is just probably really one of the most popular genres out there. To me, it is. I mean, most of, I'd say 75% of my watches are dive watches. That's, you know, my own personal preference. But uh, with unquestionably, the, this this dive watch uh, genre is just probably as big as in, in any uh, type of watch that's out there. But again, just gets give kudos to Rolex and the Zodiac for being there from the very beginning of the, of the dive, dive watch craze. And, um, you know, these are both, you know, outstanding watches. This is obviously is a more expensive watch. Uh, the Zodiac, it's a, it's about an $1,800 watch. Um, you know, it's got a Salita movement, you know, doesn't touch the accuracy of this, this, uh, even though it's a chronometer, it doesn't come close to my 31, 35 movement in this Rolex. It's just, uh, just an out, this has been just an outstanding, outstanding watch. Um, this one here is maybe about a year and a half old. This one here is, uh, is from 08. It's a M serial number. If you're familiar with the, the serial numbers on the, on the Rolexes, but anyway, really thanks. Thanks for joining me and, um, you know, please subscribe if you like this and, uh, appreciate a thumbs up and I could really use it. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for joining me and, uh, if you're interested in either, either one of these watches, you wouldn't go wrong, that's for sure. Thank you so much.